Week one is in the books. Hopefully you ate that W, as Jameis Winston would say. And we got to talk waivers. This is where your team is won and lost on the waiver day. Stick around, see who we like, see if we're burning our priority, if we're spending those big fab dollars for guys like Darren Walrus. Stay tuned. Hey, Foot Clan, take your game day treats to the next level with the new M&M's Hazelnut Spread Chocolate Candies. Picture this, Hazelnut Spread covered in smooth M&M's milk chocolate. Ooh. Delivering a mouth-watering blend of chocolate and hazelnut in every bite-sized piece. I can tell you this, we upgraded our game day this past week. Certainly did. Had a big old pack of the M&M's Hazelnut Spread Chocolate Candies out there. People go crazy over Hazelnut Spread. And you can go hazelnutty and try the new M&M's Hazelnut Spread Chocolate Candies today. Hey, it's Corlin Sutton, wide receiver for the Denver Broncos, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in all your championships have been figured out. We did it. We made it through another year. No, week one is in the books, but there's a lot of football still to come. Tuesday, September 10th, the Fantasy Footballers, Andy, Mike. And we have a special guest today, actually. Is it the Lizard King himself? No. I mean, I'm sure he'll show up from time to time because that's what he does. No, but Sam Elliott, legendary... Beef brisket. Legendary Hollywood actor. Beef Wellington. Is, is sitting in with us. Welcome to the show, Sam. Mongolian beef. Jason... <laughs> More is kind of here. I will speak when spoken to. And you will speak in a strange and disturbing uh, lizard tenor. Yeah, I wish um, I, wish I always I imagine lizard have high pitched voices. Not yeah. not all of them. You you picture a uh, one of those big old uh, Komodo dragons. They got high pitched voices. No, but when you say lizard, that's not the first thing I go to. Okay, I mean there are a lot of species. I learned a lot about lizards over the last week. So when you when someone says lizard. You, that's that's the one you go to in your no, head? No, that's the one I go to with that voice. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> not, with, not with a little <laughs> wall lizard. I uh, know I learned a lot yeah. about lizards this morning and through the weekend, to be honest with you. Um, you know, the famous quote where Sammy Watkins said, the, the earth is flat. I, the football field's flat, and that's all that really matters. That's he, all uh, that matters to us. He ruled that kingdom this past weekend. Jason uh, was smiling from his fevered bedroom <laughs> he thought it was f fever delirious Dream. well it, it yeah you'd think you were ill yeah it, it yeah I, I didn't know what was going on it it felt good i'm proud of you sammy uh keep keep slaying those humans uh he needs to do it over and over again but it looks like the table is set for him to do so yes today's the waiver show we've got uh full stream ahead some quarterback streaming options for you we have defense versus offense with some defensive streaming options we have news and notes. We have a lot of reactions to both Monday Night Football and the big weekend. I do want to remind people before the show starts, and I tweeted this out this morning. Last year after week one, I wanted to go back and look to see what the fantasy finishes were like. Kenny Stills, number three on the week. Isaiah Crowell, number three on the week. Wait, so Kenny Stills was awesome last year in week one? Correct. Well, he wasn't really awesome yesterday. He caught one pass. Yes. Certainly, but... Uh, Randall Cobb was number six. Jay, are you signing Kenny Stills, Mike? No, no. Okay. I just was saying that. Just trying to victory lap Kenny Stills in week one. <laughs> I'm sure he's weird. I'm going to go look up his actual finish. It's, cool, a, it's a weird cool. flex. It's a really weird flex. Jay Ajayi, Deion Lewis, Will Disley, Jesse James. These were all top ten guys. In fact, I looked last year, and I don't think it applies to this waiver show, but none of the players that finished in that top 15 last year that would have been waiver wire pickups at, you know, wide receiver, running back, tight end that could have been out on the waiver wire. I don't think any of them returned year long value at all. So, I mean, if you picked up, you know, I guess it would have been Deion Lewis was, was drafted last year, but the Jesse James's, Will Disley's, Kenny Stills, you just need to breathe. That's all I'm saying is we all need to breathe as fantasy owners. And we're going to talk about all the different potential pickups and the staying power, and I'm sure we'll disagree on some guys. But uh, the, the decision is up to you. 
Foot Clan. It's up to you on who you want to pick up. We just bring our information. We do. We do. But I want to get into a quick question. I think this is a great one for week one. Name your favorite buy low player that you are targeting in trades this week. Because if there's ever a time to take advantage of a tilting fantasy football owner, it would be week one when all their hopes and dreams were smashed by subpar performances by their superstars. Am I right? You are correct. And there was a lot of superstars that had really rough week one. Yeah, and I, so I'll answer with my favorites. And I will actually say uh, all of the Buccaneers. So Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, O.J. Howard, I would be targeting all three of them. And Jameis Winston was so difficult to look at with your eyeballs that the hideous Jameis will distort the real fantasy outcomes for – uh, for this team and for what Bruce Aarons will be able to accomplish with this downfield offense. Mike Evans was sick. Chris Godwin salvaged his game with a touchdown. O.J. Howard, some drops, some lower snap count than I would have hoped. So I think there is a better future for fantasy. Now, I if you're the Buccaneers uh, and you, you're hoping for a Super Bowl title, no. I'm, not, I'm not enthusiastic about Jameis. But for fantasy purposes, I would be targeting – all the bucks. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that Evans is is a fantastic target coming off of that performance. The guy I want to throw out, it, it, it wasn't horrific for Juju Smith-Schuster. Uh, he, he still had you know an okay day considering what happened to the Pittsburgh Steelers. But people were hoping for a lot from Juju. And it just the Patriots, this is what they do. Jason, you were talking about this last week before the, the game happened, that you love Juju, but week one is definitely a concern against Uncle Bill and the Patriots because they always shut down number one options. Just look what they've done in the past to number one guys like Tyreek Hill, DeAndre Hopkins, like big-name wide receivers play against the Patriots, and they get shut down. This is just what happens. So I'm I'm still in on Juju Smith-Schuster, and I'm still in on the Steelers' offense. Yeah, and, and for me, it's, it's very similar, is James Conner. Because they were the Pittsburgh Steelers were down twenty to nothing in the blink of an eye, the worst possible game script for James Conner, and uh, you know the Patriots, man, did they look unfathomably good? They looked like it's impossible to beat them. I wanted to ask you, Andy, you have seen the future, and you I, said that the yeah. Philadelphia Eagles win the Super Bowl. Correct. But how do you feel? <laughs> about that now after seeing the well look Patriots. I, I posted 18 and 0 for the Patriots I didn't post 19 and 0 oh so yes I don't think it'll be the Giants breaking up that perfect season but Philadelphia same division I'm yeah, cool with that very nice very but nice. no they they look great and then you've got Uncle Bill equivocating on whether Antonio Brown's going to play for them this week oh yeah. which is a real possibility I mean it's possible they don't Feel the need. They don't need him this no. week. Um, they may bench a couple extra other guys just for the, for safety. We're going to play with nine guys. Brady, sit this one out. <laughs> um, the The reality is oh, every Miami. every single league out there has that owner that tilts week one. We have them in our league. And you have to go and trade for whoever did not do well this week. Trade away whoever did well. You know what I mean? Like Just, just find the guys – that like Mike Evans is a perfect example because if they're not paying attention, they don't know about the illness. They don't know about the snap counts. Well, and you're not trying. You're what you're trying to do is say, I don't know. Here's a good example. I obviously believe in the Colts offense. I believe in T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton scored twice this week. You know, he's he's on average what a six seven touchdown a year guy. Right. He scored twice this week. If you can go flip T.Y. Hilton for Mike Evans, sure. That's the that's the recipe. The 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 super high. You're you know you're not going to steal Mike Evans for uh you know Hollywood Brown or somebody. You're not going to steal him for a, a one week no name, but for T. Y. Hilton, a big name, that's a possibility. I almost put James Conner in as my buy low, even though I'm not a believer in the Steelers long term. His performance this week, there's a lot of brighter days ahead for James Conner. He's just too look. You can't give you can't give Dante Moncrief ten targets. You. You need to exactly. use Juju and you need to use Connor. And whether more teams are capable of taking those guys away like Bill Belichick, I doubt it. I doubt it. And and so just utilization wise, it makes sense. Follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Jason just passed a hundred thousand. Congratulations. Followers this we, morning. We did it. 
uh, at Jason FFL. Mike is at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. And the show, like I said, at the FF Ballers on YouTube. We're on Patreon, jointhefoot.com. We encourage you to join our fantasy football community. It has been a very, very fun ride over the last four plus years. Uh, I'm so appreciative to all of the Foot Clan that have been with us throughout this ride. We love what we're doing, and uh, we're thankful that you guys like the show, and we're going to keep doing it, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Quick yeah. reactions to last night. The Saints game was incredible. Oh. I've never seen a situation where, you know, oh, d- does Deshaun Watson have this in him two throws later? It's over. The drive's over. He's just – he is so incredibly good that the pain the Bears – fans must feel over passing on Mahomes and Watson. I mean, it's just the he's, pain look, he's so good. He what? got sacked 10 to- or 6 times. Say the pain that like Watson 10. feels. Like Watson deserves better f- around him because they're, they're, he he single like not single-handedly cuz Hopkins was was an absolute monster, but Watson won that game. And then they said Let's let's hit him with the prevent defense when all they need is a field goal. Come on, guys. We need to do better. Well, the funny thing about that game, and I heard it argued on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio this morning, was that an argument could be made that it would have been better for Houston to miss the extra point than to make it. Because if you missed it, the, the they're, they're driven back. They're at the 25. They are not. They don't have the imminence to drive down the field on two throws and kick a field goal. Game probably goes to overtime. You're not putting in that. It's just a funny argument to think about because I think it might be right. I don't think the Saints would have done that. I don't think the Saints – I do not think that they kicked that field goal in a neutral game script because you, you just more risk, just much more risk. Mm-hmm. You go to overtime, you're at home, win the game. Ah, it's funny, but it was an incredible ball game. I mean, yes, just unbelievable. It, it was fantastic. the The big the thing that was interesting to me was well, well, it not so much interesting, but for Alvin Kamara, what the actual workload he got was incredible. He was on the field a ton. He is going to be an absolute beast. There are three players this this weekend that I thought eyeball test. Like when you right. use your use the film to guide you. Three player. I'm not counting Saquon. Saquon always looks incredible. He he would be the the fourth. Uh, Dalvin Cook looked incredible this weekend. Cowboys in general, yep. especially Dak Prescott, and then Alvin Kamara. I every single time he touched the ball last night, I thought he was going to go 75 to the house. Every it, single time. Yes. Uh, incredible balance. 13 for 97. Seven receptions. He was a beast. Latavius Murray only had six total carries. He did have the big touchdown run that will distort the narrative. Alvin Kamara yes, is it will. the guy. He's the RB1 and 2. Sure. And then on the other side of the ball, Carlos Hyde started the game. <laughs> the Duke Johnson truthers were, were out there. They were bare-chested. They were painted up. And then Carlos Hyde came boom, 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 came onto the field. 8.3 a carry, Mike. And then he was good. Well. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, he, d- he didn't look slow or bad. He actually looked pretty decent out there. Uh, but we, you know, we said this could happen. I mean, we we gave shout outs to Alfred Blue of saying, "Don't be a- shocked if Carlos Hyde comes in and gets the workload." Can you trust either of these players though? Only ten carries for Carlos Hyde. Yeah, he was super efficient. I'm not going to count on that every week. Nine carries I for feel, Duke Johnson. I'm fine with Duke Johnson as a flex. I am okay. because he's he got about the same amount of carries and he had four receptions, and that's going to keep happening with with uh, Deshaun Watson running for his life. Yeah, you know, it's going to take time apparently. For Laramie Tunzel to block somebody, it was a bad night for him. I love the tweet. You don't spell turnstile without Tunzel. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, he he gave up a huge sack body. on the biggest play of the game. He did. He was consistently beat all night, but it will get better uh, for that offensive line slightly at least yeah, when was, he gets acclimated. It was just an awesome game, and it was capped off, of course, with a boom boom. <laughs> I mean, unbelievable. Will, will Lutz. Lutz yeah, you 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 called that one, man. I mean, the months, excellent work, the Jason. months of research in knowing that Will Lutz was going to be the boom boom the of boom week boom one. of the week. It was ironclad, locked and loaded. Well, they, it's absolutely right. Broncos Raiders. It's difficult to watch Joe Flacco play football. Uh, Six point three per attempt last night. He already was at the NFL low six point four over the last few years. The Broncos, the Raiders. 
the Raiders look good. The Raiders have a running sure. back, Josh Jacobs, 23 for 85, two touchdowns. They have a wide receiver in Tyrell Williams, 6 for 105 and 1, and the path is uh, clean for him, and they have a tight end. Oh, oh goo goo ba <laughs> Goodness. If you, were not on, if you were not on Twitter last night, you missed out. I was hyped be out of my mind for Darren Waller. Just immediately, like, and it was, you didn't have to wait. That's what was so fantastic about it. The game starts, and before you know it, he's two for 35 or whatever he he was at. He was heavily involved. He was he played every single snap of the game. They're lining him up in the slot. They're lining him up out wide. Yes, the targets are short, a la a Dennis Pitt a target, but he is going to break a few of those because he's so athletically gifted. And the passing offense is Williams and Darren Waller. I think that the game plan that John Gruden brought into this game was very smart. What you saw with Derek Carr, who went 22 for 26 in 259 and 1, what you saw was a, you know, he'd look for first read downfield, and then he had a leaking Darren Waller on every play that he could turn to. Josh Jacobs had a monster game, one reception, 23 carries. The game script was favorable to Jacobs in terms of wearing out the clock. So I don't know if you see 23 every week. But on the other side, you know, Royce Freeman, 10 carries. Philip Lindsay, 11 carries. Joe Flacco was acclimating. And then, you know, Cortland Sutton, 7, yeah. seven for 120. Emmanuel Sanders, 5 for 86. It took Emmanuel Sanders about two and a half quarters before he was really even getting targeted in this game and then became the guy over the back half. Which was super bizarre. I you you guys can have I mean I don't know what your opinion is on Cortland Sutton I certainly am not buying Cortland Sutton he's not on my waiver watch list at all he's he, definitely he would, on mine yeah he would definitely be on mine as well I mean he he was drafted to be a star physically he's gifted he's a he's an incredible athlete and what you saw on the field was him looking like a true NFL receiver making contested catches running great routes. Now, I don't love this offense. I certainly don't love the quarterback, but I think Cortland Sutton should be in the in consideration among others for a, a waiver wire pickup. Yeah. Or we'll, you know. we'll get to all the wide receiver names, and then we'll throw those at you and see if you'd rather have Cortland Sutton on your team. I just think the I think there's going to be volatility on this offense. And, oh, yeah. And, and yeah, certainly. We're not saying that, that he's a number one by any means, but it's like he. this is his second year. I mean, the, this – this looked like a wide receiver who took the next step. He was it was not just force feeding Cortland Sutton. It was Sutton was wide open, and Joe Flacco loves a wide open wide receiver. Preferably close to the line of scrimmage. Yes. Uh let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, Joe Mixon update. Ankle sprain. Uh there were some reports that I saw this morning that he has a chance to play on Sunday. Uh, they're calling it a day-to-day -day injury. This is not a high ankle. This is best case scenario for mixing owners. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, it is. I, I expect that he will try to push to play. I mean, it's which kind of stinks because Gio Bernard was an obvious waiver wire pickup. If Mixon is going to mix miss time, I think that Gio still is a good pickup. Uh, and hopefully Mixon does not re aggravate. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Tevin Coleman, high ankle sprain. Those normally come with a two- to six-week recovery window. That's a, a wide range. I would be leaning towards missing him for four weeks yes. or so. Uh, and Matt Breida will take over as the lead running back there. And the colonel. And Colonel Mustard. <laughs> Raheem he, Mustard. He's somebody that if you are in desperate need of a running back to play that will have work, he will have work. Yes, he will. You know? Darius Geis dealing with a meniscus injury. He hopes to return in a few weeks. I am not as optimistic because the recovery of Darius Geis has been a you know longer term thing with previous injury. You're going to have Adrian Peterson behind center over the next few weeks. I almost dropped him. I you I don't know if you heard the show yesterday, Jason. I. I was real close to dropping him on Sunday when he got in, when he got marked inactive just to take the shot on John Brown, Jamison Say, Crowder. Now, to be fair, John Brown was the player you would have added. At this point, would 
do you wish that had gone through after John Brown's huge game? No. Okay. No, I don't, because it's more difficult to find starting running backs than it is weekly flyers at the wide receiver position. So I just think there's so many wideouts out there that you can There's buy a in. lot this week. Yeah, and there, there will be. It will be all the guys that score one touchdown next week that aren't on teams, and that's the part we have to wade through. Who's got the staying power? Sterling Shepard placed in the concussion protocol. He had a pretty disappointing week one, so we'll monitor that. Juju Smith-Schuster, who limped off, had x-rays on the toe, expected to be fine for week two. Baker Mayfield underwent precautionary x-rays on his injured hand and ego <laughs> after week <laughs> one and getting whooped by the Titans. Uh, he's okay. Sammy Watkins, Tyreek Hill. Oh, well, Sammy Watkins said Tyreek Hill will be out six to seven weeks. In his he also said the earth is flat. He did. So, and and that he's a lizard. And he's a lizard man, and he's the king of the lizards. So... <laughs> I don't think I don't think he let me just correct you. I don't want to misspeak because he would be embarrassed if he thought you said that. He did not claim to be the king of the lizards, Mike. We claim that on his behalf, inferring his massive talent would lead him to the top of the lizard regime. I genuinely believe that if he is a lizard person, he deserves to be king. After uh, week so one. I genuinely believe he is king of the lizards. He's cold blooded. Well, no <laughs> doubt about it. He's cold blooded. <laughs> I just didn't want to misquote him because he would be embarrassed. That's, that's fair. We don't want to make him say weird things. Can we make sure we turn to him for some life advice later in the show? Oh, 100%. Okay. I'll check through his Twitter feed and see what we can pull Thank up. Thank you. Nick Foles placed on injured reserve with a designation to return the collarbone injury. The uh, secret garden himself, uh, Gardner <laughs> Minshew. Dude, I love who, it. Who, by the way. He balled out, man. So he balled out. But I wonder what that says. Uh, says you know, you're trying to project the defensive situation in the in football this this right. year. Right. You can't just take week one and project it over the whole season, and you can't take last year because there's turnover. But when you put them together, but the Chiefs, the Chiefs, <laughs> you might stream against the Chiefs. That's all yes. I'm saying. Yes, I am not afraid to stream quarterbacks against the Chiefs. Twenty-two for twenty-five to start his career. Eighty-eight percent completion Cause, percentage. Because no one knows the secret. Do you think he trolled Drew Brees with that completion percentage after week one? Definitely. I think he... Eat it, Drew! Did you see him in the press conference? He certainly hangs out with Hunter Renfro. They are close. Oh, doing like tax forms? And there are certain play players that you just look at and you're like, really? Like This guy's going to get me a better rate for yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> There's certain guys you look at and say, this guy's going to get me a better rate on my car insurance. Colts placed Devin Funches on injured reserve. This is a huge... Swing and a miss uh, in Indianapolis on a one-year deal to lose Funches for uh, yeah, unfortunate this season the collarbone injury that stinks. So yeah, I mean, look for Deion Kane to step up. We'll see. Look and, for some integration of Paris Campbell over time, and it, I mean, this could be great news for the tight ends. Like, yes. I think they're the biggest benefactors. Who they were not very involved. I. I mean, it's you still have to be concerned, but with Funchess out, I wouldn't just drop them and move on yet. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Be sure to check out the Sleeper app for the latest breaking news, notes, and impactful fantasy football tidbits. Jason, make sure you grab that app. Uh, I've already got it, my man. All right, and we do want to uh, thank today's sponsors before we get into our waiver wire segment. Ballers out there, fellow football fans, it's time to ball out with us. You heard it on Friday. We're teaming up with FanDuel to bring you the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series. You pick your best lineup, you face off against other listeners, and you can win cash prizes each and every week. There are 15 chances to win, over 30000 in prizes. And if you win any of the weeks, you qualify for the Week 16 Championship, and the lucky winner receives an all-expenses-paid trip to our Arizona studio to hang out with us during a podcast session this filled up quick last week. Yes. We got word that the uh, leaderboard series, it, it capped at 500 last week. It filled up very quickly. Uh, we give you some advice on Friday. And look, each week, we'll tell you who our picks are. We can give you that insider info. You can build the lineup to end all lineups. And uh, all you got to do is go to fanduel.com slash ballers. It's a very easy to remember URL. FanDuel.com slash ballers. Enter the leaderboard series. Hang out with us. We'd like to thank Quip for sponsoring today's show. What actually makes a better toothbrush? Is it industrial strength power? Is it multiple modes? 
If you ask your dentist, they'll tell you it's less about the brush and more about how you use it. That's why you need Quip. It's remarkably simple. It's an electric toothbrush created by dentists and product designers to focus on what actually matters for your oral health, healthier habits. The Quip, it's got sensitive vibrations with a built-in timer. Guide gentle brushing for the dentist recommended two minutes, and they're automatically going to send you a new brush head every three months. No more of that nasty toothbrush. No more forgetting that I got to replace these bristles. Uh, my entire family, we are living the Quip life because they got kids' toothbrushes as well. What you call it, a toothbrush or a teeth brushes? Uh, I would not call it the teeth brushes, <laughs> that's for sure. Look, I've got them. My wife has it. My kids have it as well. I love my Quip toothbrush. Quip starts at just $25, and you'll get your first refill free at get, getquip.com slash footballers. This is a simple way to support our show and start brushing better, but you have to go to getquip.com slash footballers to get your first refill free. Put me in, coach. All right. Week one waiver show. We're here. I'm I'm really excited for this because I was not with you two gentlemen for watching football, for talking about the the fallout of everything. That's why we're still healthy and, and alive. Right. And Thank you. You're welcome. I stayed away as long as I could. But I'm really excited because I don't know how much we agree or disagree on some of these names. And this is the first chance that I get to debate with you guys on this. Yeah, and I hope that that serves as the advantage of listening to a show with three hosts on it where we're not sitting here trying to – I mean, we will agree, and we will bring those consensus forward. That's what the UDK had with sleepers and breakouts and busts, but we're going to disagree too and help you form your opinion. This is the time of the season now where you pivot from, look, we're out of draft season. You've set the foundation for your team, but you don't win the title there. This is the time – when you are now uh, adjusting, readjusting, modifying your team, uh, you know, strategically looking at trades like we opened the show with, this is the time to make your run. I mean, build your team. This is the time of year when George Kittle can, was purchased for a Kittle last year, 44 fab. Certainly. So a couple reminders. Last week's points, they do not count for the upcoming week, Oh, believe it or not. Uh, but no, last week's points don't count. We're projecting forward. Uh, there are probably a lot of players that we'll talk through in, in terms of drop options this week. Players that are we comfortable with you kicking to the curb or do you need to hold on for another week? Those type of guys. So uh, we'll have drop it like it's hot tomorrow. That's a segment we do where look at what players were dropped by teams after the waiver wire. There are going to be, and here's a little spoiler alert, my streaming quarterback option this week is on the basis of him being dropped on waivers today. Yes. So pay attention there. Wide receivers. Uh, let's look at the main waiver wire names this week and talk about opinions. The biggest one that I want to debate is Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown, mm. because he had quite the debut as a rookie, four for 147 and two. Now, he only ran eight routes in the game. He was targeted on five of the eight routes. He only That's played, pretty solid, though. Uh, well, you, clearly it was a, uh, to me, strategic decision to say, Hollywood Brown is banged up. When he's on the field, we're going to use him. And then we're going to take him off the field and keep him healthy. Only 12 total snaps. Only ran eight routes. There are some that, you know, they want to throw the warning lights up and say, well, he only ran 12 snaps. How could you possibly invest in him, put, spend your fab dollars, your waiver pickup on Hollywood Brown? There's the, the side we talked about yesterday, though, where it's like he only ran eight routes, and he was this productive, and clearly he's dealing with an injury and, and building a rapport with Lamar Jackson, but it's the Miami Dolphins. So how are you wading through the Marquise Brown uh, conundrum on waiver wires? Because it's not so much is he worth a pickup. Of course he's worth a flyer. Yeah. The question is, how much would you spend on him? Oof. Here, the, the amount you that I would spend on Marquise Brown, that's that's extremely difficult because he is 100% a must-add, but you still might be waiting. Like I, the, the breakout happened. We all got to see it, but it wouldn't shock me, even though this, they're in a very plus matchup against the Arizona Cardinals, if, if next week Marquise Brown is one reception for 
15 yards. Like That's in the realm of possibilities, unfortunately, for Marquise Brown as he works his way into the game. But the, the waiver wire is not just about what do I need today, it's what do I need tomorrow. And Marquise Brown looks like he should be a, a fantastic long-term stash uh, that – that you can play in a pinch. So here's, I mean, I, I'm paying, I'm going at least 15% for Marquise Brown. I think it's very interesting. He's got Arizona, Kansas city on. And the, I'm talking about my, how much fab I would spend. Yeah, correct. Uh, you know, he's going to be a boom dependent player to a degree. This is not a passing offense. What look, Lamar Jackson looked amazing. I'm the biggest Lamar Jackson fan in the world, but you still have to understand this is going to be an offense. You got Mark Andrews, who was heavily involved in Week One. Willie Sneed. Um, you know you have other options, so I think that the road is not going to be a consistent one for Marquise Brown. Agreed. So I'm not going to spend up on Marquise Brown. I will okay. spend. I, I would probably only spend, you know, five to eight fab. If you're in a hundred dollar league, I'd probably spend five to eight dollars. That's probably all I'm going. Jason, so you, you have been. Uh, yeah, I'm dying over here. <laughs> I just, I, I, Do you, you want to just, write down what you your opinion great. is and yeah, then thank you, we'll Mike. share it? I have always loved Hollywood Brown. Always. He, he, from college, he's <laughs> unbelievable. Serious. I'm dead. You sound ridiculous. <clears throat> the schedule says pick him up yes. and play him. Yeah, the schedule, because it's not just the Cardinals. The, because, it's the Chiefs following that. And then the Cleveland Browns. So we're talking... What well, looks like three fantastic matchups to, to start be, the season. To be clear, Jason has loved Hollywood Brown since he was uh, one of the sheriffs with Wyatt Earp mm. back in the 1800s, right? Those are my people. Yeah. I uh, So let's turn to, to okay. some other uh, players that were in that boom category with the speed. John Brown, 7 for 123, had the game-winning touchdown. John Ross, 7 for 158 and 2 on 12 targets and played 82% of the snaps. So if you look at John Brown, if you look at uh, John Ross, John and John, who do you prefer wow. out of that group? Man, that's that's tough. I think like John Brown is the number one wide receiver on the Buffalo Bills. This like I'm this is where we are. 10 targets and we saw last year at the end of the season when Josh Allen came back, his number one wide receiver can have sustained production, can have big games over and over and over, and that's what John Brown does. And he's also got two great matchups coming up with the Giants and the Bengals. John Ross, is his breakout was great. I went back and I watched every single target that John Ross received, and he looked fantastic. I mean, he was – he ran excellent routes. He was getting open. There was even a couple that, that were misthrows by Andy Dalton. He, he also – John Ross had a – uh, drop across the middle where he probably would have scored another 50-yard touchdown. Can we pour one out for all the players stifled by head coaches that are stupid? Because yes, yes. Because you, you look at I – would, I would be kicking John Ross to the waiver wire curb today if Marvin Lewis was his head coach. Mm -hmm. I there don't would be, I would have no interest in the flash in the pan. Now, I will say this. I prefer both John Brown and Hollywood Brown to John Ross. Okay. And, and that is uh, on the basis of staying power – I'm I'm very curious to see what happens against San Francisco. Their secondary looked really quite good against Jameis Winston in Week One and Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. But John Ross's staying power is not season long. AJ Green will return, and you will be put in a position where you're you have to answer the question mentally: Am I starting the number three passing option for Andy Dalton? And I'm never going to answer yes to that question. You cannot make me do that. AJ Green and Tyler Boyd are better starts than John Ross when AJ Green is back. So I like the longer term play in John Ron on John Brown because you know you you probably a lot of these guys you're not putting them in your lineup in in week two maybe you are maybe you need to I would but for a lot of them you don't need to because you have other guys and there weren't a lot of injuries at wide receiver that's it's funny because all three of these guys Ross against the 49ers Brown against or John Brown against the Giants and Marquise Brown against Arizona. I well, would, I, I would not play saying, all three of these but, guys so far. Uh, we'll, we'll put that to the test later this week because okay. I'm not saying that you can't start them. I'm saying you probably won't because you've got other players you drafted higher that, you know, who, who are you going to bench? Sure. Are you going to play Robbie Anderson or are you going to play these guys? Hmm. Is you it, know, yeah, the, sure. those are the questions people are going to face because they spent the draft capital on, on Robbie Anderson late in drafts. Uh, do I have any disagreement on the John Ross long-term value? No, it, it, that should be what he's looking at. But 
Also, AJ Green, we one, you don't know when he's coming back. Two, he is at high risk for another re aggravation. I mean, AJ Green's body just it feels like it's breaking down. But you are he the the team's plan at least is to have him back, which will put John Ross into that number three role. And you should be optimistic about AJ Green. <laughs> Because he's AJ Green, and what was that? Jason, Jason. do we need to wheel him out? I'm seriously, people, this is a podcast. Is... People actually have to listen to. Um, I'll be better. Uh, just hold the cough button down. Just is there a just lock? Permanent. Can we put the lock on it? Um, <laughs> uh, what I was going to say is, if you're optimistic about Zach Taylor, you should be very optimistic about AJ Green's upside. That's fair. Because this is a more innovative, better offense, and A.J. Green is one of the best players in football when he's healthy. Sure. Uh, okay. Jamison Crowder had 17 targets. <laughs> he had 14 receptions. He had 99 yards. That's so he bad. He plays Cleveland next week. I don't – Brooks, can you do me a favor? Yes. Um, newly bald Brooks, by the way. Oh. Bald and beautiful. Bald and beautiful. Can you – do a Quincy and Noonwa health check for me. I, I feel like that's probably a hotline and yeah. some, that we can get into. Yeah, I'll dial but in. I know he limped off the field. I want to know his status. That depends. Everything about Jamison Crowder picking him up, to me, considering playing him this week, has a, a lot to do with a Noonwa's health. So, he's, he's interesting to me because it's Adam Gase, Mr. Beehole as the head coach of the Jets. and No matter how many times you call him that, it's, it's still equally startling. insulting. <laughs> Like, there's never a point when you can become immune to being called Mr. Beehole. And we have seen him use a player like this before. I mean, this was Jarvis Landry. of, of Back when Gaze was coaching the Dolphins, this is what happened. Huge amount of receptions, lower yardage. Uh, in a standard league, I'm not really interested in Crowder, but in a PPR league, I am very interested because I'm not expecting 14 receptions a week, but Crowder certainly could be hitting that eight plus reception on a weekly basis um yeah it'll be interesting i'm not really excited about him yeah i'm not excited but, but i in a ppr he sure. is a must add yeah I, I don't disagree uh when you talk about michael gallup and what you saw in the field and with kellen moore's offense this is the player we saw in training camp in preseason seven for 158 on seven targets has washington coming up this week I'm personally very interested in Michael Gallup in all leagues. I was interested before the season. I'm more interested now after seeing what the offensive line is doing because I believe the, the, the math equation here, offensive line protection for Dak Prescott, downfield routes for Michael Gallup, A plus B equals big stat lines like this over the course of the season. He was on the field just as much as Amari Cooper, who has dealt with some injury concerns. I'm very, very excited for Michael Gallup, and I'm more interested in Michael Gallup than I think. Honestly, I'm more. I'd, I'd rather have him than anybody in this lineup. In, in really, this, in this group, I am. I know that's not a popular take. Oh, it's, I, it's, I, just, it's not going to be shared by very many. But I'm more interested in the passing volume and power of what this offense can do this year. I told you, Dalvin Cook, um, Alvin Kamara, and the Cowboys were the things I was most impressed with on film. And and I think that Michael Gallup has, you know, you're talking about. Do you want, do you want John Brown? Do you want the kind of number one for Josh Allen, who's going to have some volatility, or do you want like the one B, the two for for Dak Prescott? That's that's your opinion. I mean, you it's it's subjective. Yeah, I'm just I, very excited for Michael Gallup because I think he will actually be very consistent this year. At home against the Giants, you know, th that was why Dak was my start of the week, right? I'm not quite as excited. The The wide receiver we haven't brought up that I'm as excited about as any is it? Terry McLaurin. Oh, really? Oh, welcome on board. Oh, I'm I'm all about him. I, uh, he'd be my in my top three wide receivers this week. Interesting. Wow, very interesting. Yeah, so McLaurin was on the field nonstop, 93% of the snaps. It was him and the Trey Quinn show, 5 for 125 with a score. And... McLaurin he, is really, really fast. I don't, he's their future. He is the future. He was a third round pick. He was, he was this. He, he was a rookie, or I'm sorry, in rookie drafts. For he, some reason, even, he still is. Well, I'm saying in rookie drafts, people were not excited for McLaurin, which was was baffling to me. Coming up with his athletic profile, and he was a third round pick. Like, 
I was I scooped him up off of waiver wires. He also runs a four three five. Yes, he's super fast. He was open for another touchdown in this game. Yes, the snap. That's one of the things you need to wade through. You know, you can have big play performances, but are you on the field? And he was on the field a lot. Uh, you know, I I'm not as excited as Jason for the long term value of Terry McLaurin at all because I see a quarterback transition happening on this team. You are, but and I I think what about the connection though? That the two that that Dwayne Haskins and McLaurin played together yeah. had already have tremendous chemistry. That doesn't factor into your your thinking of him long term. It certainly factors into my dynasty thinking of Terry McLaurin. It doesn't necessarily factor into my short term because when I read all these other names and the opportunities they have, I'd rather have McCall Hardman than I would Terry McLaurin. Okay, you know, going into this extended absence for Tyreek Hill, uh, you know, I'd rather have. A handful. Of, I'd rather have Michael Gallup this year than I would Terry McLaurin. Sure, I think it's a great debut. The rookies they showed up. They showed out. AJ Brown, Miles Boykin, Hollywood Brown, Terry McLaurin. Speed killed week one. Absolutely. But um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not as excited. He's only four percent owned, so you you can take your shot on him. But I, you know, if he goes up against Dallas this week and gives you one for thirty, I'll I'll be that will meet my expectations for McLaurin. So where are unfortunately, you? Unfortunately, Jason. I, I will try to pose as Jason, who can't speak at the moment. Uh, he disagrees with me. He likes McLaurin a lot long term. Um, he is. He I nods think, in approval. I think he's sucking on some sort of lozenge. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't be really giving him the opportunity to re to rebuttal at all. I mean, this is my chance to sh to yes. shine against him. So, question for you then: Where are you on McCole Hardman? Where the opportunity for him should be great. We well, that, I just brought him up. I like yeah. him a lot more than Terry McLaurin. Okay, so even though... If I'm looking for a week one start this week... You'd go with M Hardman. McCall Hardman's in my dynasty lineup right now, in the flex position for this upcoming week. No Tyreek Hill. He had great... Uh, he, he was on the field for a ton of snaps. I don't know if you have the number right in front of you, Mike, because you mentioned it yesterday. But McCall Hardman was out there a ton in week one. So, you know, I, do I want an opportunity to boom with a receiver on the Chiefs or the Redskins? Yeah. So that's, my, that's my view there. I, I totally understand that because Hardman is a – he's another guy that I think everyone should be picking up. I would play McCall Hardman over John Ross this week. Wow. Yeah, and I'll water bet that. I owe you guys a couple – I might you not want to water Jason because I may give him pneumonia at this point. You want to water bet McCall Hardman this week versus John Ross? Very possibly. You can't say wow like that, Mike, and not say yes to a water bet. Okay, fine. Water bet. I mean, I guess you could have taken back your wow. I mean that that was no. An it's it's just uh, on the surface. I get that the opportunity will be there for him. He still is competing with the Lizard King. Meanwhile, and he had one target. You can and be John Ross had twelve targets. Yeah, and that's why you should have taken the bet right out because I'm a fool. Well, I and you're did. Super smart. Uh, you can have a number one uh, human receiver and number one lizard receiver on the same team. Ah, Didn't, yes. So I overlooked that. Maybe I'm feeling a little bit just kind of like sure of myself after week one's bets and this is this will be where the fool fool's decision but betting on john ross is also something that you should it has do. not worked out you shouldn't do any time you're about to eat or anything <laughs> of that nature running back waiver wire pickups we need to move on to the running back position geo there. bernard looked very interesting joe mixon coming back potentially playing this week i'm curious where you're at with geo seven for 21 on the ground two for 42 through the air Let's start there. Gio Bernard, how much fab budget would you really spend? Would you spend a waiver priority on him? No. I'm not that interested. No, I'm not going to burn the number one priority. I'll throw a couple bucks at him, see if he trickles through the waiver system and he just ends up on my team. But without without an absence for Joe Mixon, like you said, Gio Bernard, nine total touches, seven carries and two receptions. Like That's not... That's not unbelievably interesting as a standalone player at, as of right now. But if Mixon is to be out, then then Gio Bernard against the 49ers, I think, is a, is a nice play. Yeah, uh, I, I think I'm more interested in some of these other options. We'll see if you guys are. Malcolm Brown, 12% yes. owned, 11 for 53 and 2. You're not going to get two touchdowns from Malcolm Brown every week, but you might get one. Yeah, but the can, way this offense is. Are you willing to play him? Right away, he didn't play on a bunch of. of I'm snaps. not excited. No, 27. percent It was still the Todd Gurley show, but those high leverage, high fantasy points came because Malcolm Brown got, Malcolm Brown got the end zone carries. Uh, are you more interested in Malcolm Brown or Chris Thompson going into Week Two? Thompson. Thompson. Sam Elliott weighed in. 
He's going with Chris Thompson. Um, other names to throw out there, Justin Jackson, who I thought, despite only having seven touches in the game, I actually thought he looked good in those touches, but he's going to be out there. Justice Hill, eh, whatever. Ronald Jones. Ronald Jones had a great game. I Every time I turned my head over to the – uh, to this Jameis Winston experience and saw him hand the ball off, one, I was relieved, and two, Ronald Jones, 13 for 75. Yep. This is a, a situation where if he breaks off a big run next week, he may. this might be his backfield. Uh, well, it won't be his backfield because he will never take the, the passing work. If you saw he only had one target, and Dare Agumbawale was the primary pass catcher. Ronald Jones will never have that role, and if – it's what do you believe about the Tampa Tampa Bay Buccaneers? I believe they will be in negative game scripts far more often than they will be in a positive one. It so, is a difficult like, one to wade through because I, Arians does make running backs very good. Right. But then, like you said, the game script problem, you might not see Ronald Jones on the field a ton. I actually thought their defense looked okay to me. I thought it was much better than last year. This is a game with San Francisco that was, you know, it was a little bit back and forth. Winston couldn't get out of his own way. That. If you think about it, what did he throw? You know, a couple of interceptions. He threw a pick six. Yeah. The pick six goes up on the board. I mean, Tampa Bay gave up not a lot of, uh, you know, production. I will pose this to you, though. Okay. Jameis Winston will still throw more pick sixes. Very strong Over point. the season. I'm just – I Ronald Jones is a fine, low-money fab acquisition to, and just put him on the bench, see what you have. I will tell you this. I will, I will be releasing Peyton Barber. This week, That's I will fair. be keeping Ronald Jones on my roster. At this point in time, you I would try and trade him if I were you. Peyton Barber? No, 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 no. Peyton Barber? No, Ronald Jones. That's fine. My my whole point is that I'm not going to clog two roster spots up with the decision for Tampa Bay backfield any further. Is Agumba Wale in your deep league waiver pickups? No, it, not compared to these other guys. Like I would rather have Justice Hill. I I want people to understand right now. How in, somewhat enjoyable, mostly sad it is to, if you're watching the show on YouTube, we're in the three shot right now <laughs> where we got the three cameras zoomed in on each oh. of us. When, when I talk or when Mike talks, Jason, who is definitely, I've confirmed a lozenge is in his mouth. He is not speaking. He is contributing to the show on YouTube through nods and head shakes only. Now, it, it's the best he's ever sounded, honestly. In a, in, a, in a way, you are like Hollywood Brown. Limited snaps today. Fairly effective in the work you've done. Um, limping <laughs> off the field at the end. So That's right. <laughs> oh, he's back. He's back, and yet he's not. Are you, inter are you Number one pickup for you at the running back position, Mike. All right, would you rather have, you know, is it Chris Thompson? Yeah, I would say Chris Thompson's my number one pickup. And then... Is Carlos Hyde in that category? He's not in the. He's in a category if I want to pick him up. If I'm in a bit of a deeper league, Adrian Peterson or Chris Thompson. Thompson, and mm -hmm. it sounds kind of gross, but Raheem Mostert is one of my top running back pickups. I he will he will play. This, they won't give everything to Matt Breida. They will split it about two ways. The amazing thing about a guy like Raheem Mostert, this is just getting into the psyche of fantasy football players. If you play him. And you get a good performance, you're happy. And like you probably brag about starting Colonel Mustard. But if you play Raheem Mostert and he sucks for you, then you played Raheem Mostert. That's how it feels. So you get into totally the, get it. You, you know what I mean? You get into the risk reward factor, and I don't know if I have the cojones to do that. I totally understand. But I get what you're saying. Very small. I actually think I think Justin Jackson will be a very interesting start this week against Detroit. Hmm. So um, all right, moving on to tight end, Mark Andrews. He's 79% owned, but if he's not, please, 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 please pick him up. Yep. Big weeks from TJ Hawkinson. Uh, fifth most tight end routes run in week one. 37 routes run. Matthew Stafford's going to fall in love with this guy. He looked great to me. Had some Kittle-esque uh, downfield plays. You know, taking the ball. I love Hawkinson. You have to pick him up. Jason is writing a message, and he says, Hawk is his number one of the Is that across all positions, Jason? All positions. So he has uh, – TJ Hawkinson is his number one. I think I get why. I'll, I'll just speak for you, Jason. Please, please. Um, and that is because you traditionally like players with multiple periods in their name. 100%. No, I think the reason why is, is the, the what your team gets 
if you're right on Hawkinson is sure. greater than what you get if you're right on John Brown or you're right on uh, Chris Thompson. The benefit to your team is Kittle-like. It's weak winning. He's nodding profusely. He agrees entirely. So let's put it this way. Darren Waller last night, uh, the Wallerist himself. So good, 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 good. Seven for 70 on eight targets. I'll say this about Do you Hawkinson. Want Darren Waller or TJ Hawkinson? Hawkinson does not have a cool nickname like Darren Waller, which is holding him back. I mean, maybe that's on us. Well, I feel like it's, it's sometimes you give the nickname and then they're constrained by it. We're waiting for him to emerge into his nickname. Okay. Hawkinson versus Waller. Jason, you can weigh in with one word here. Hawkinson or Waller, both of them less than 50% owned uh, in a lot of leagues. Who do you prefer? Hawkinson is a downfield threat that is drafted to be one of the best tight ends of the last decade. That's not who Darren Waller is. It's a top is. 10 pick, guys. Yeah, I mean, it, Hawkinson, yep. you know, I, I talk about the history of, you know, rookies at tight end and wide receiver. They don't usually get off to a strong start. I'm fine playing those probabilities. Now, those probabilities are going to be right nine out of 10 Well, they'll years, probably come to bear but, game to game on Hawkinson, too. Yes, but this, but that's not to say there aren't outliers. And what we saw, the utilization, I mean, think about Mark Andrews, who had a great rookie tight end year last year. He was on the field 35% of the time. TJ Hawkinson already established and proved he is their guy. Every play, every snap, he's being used downfield. He's got the talent, so I'm all in how, on Hawkins. How much do you regret the fact that based on your current health, you may not live to see the day that Hawkinson you know, lives I, up to the potential? I, I want to live. <laughs> want to make it through the season um what was that old uh is it rip ripley's believe it or not that had the like the skeleton guy at the beginning of the show the host is are that you talking about dean kane oh dean <laughs> oh man dean was kane, he the skeleton dean kane no, was the host no what am i talking, talking about? about tales from the crypt That's you're talking us. about the crypt you confused superman with the crypt keeper no 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 i confused jason with the crypt keeper that was the connection <laughs> i want to be clear not Dion Kane. Um, no, no, uh, Dion. No, sorry, Dion. Dion. No, there's a third guy in the mix. <laughs> oh. oh, so there's Dean Kane, there's Dion Kane, and then there's the Crypt Keeper. And then the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> <laughs> One of these things is very different. Um, that I'll, I'll say this. The Crypt Keeper will not be T.J. Hawkinson's nickname. Uh, Vernon Davis uh, defied logic, jumped over six players. Are you interested in Vernon Davis at all? If this Jordan Reed – I mean, Jordan Reed – Projecting him to return is probably the wrong attitude to have. At this point, yeah. Yeah, as a fantasy owner at all for this offense. So is there any interest in the 2% owned Vernon Davis? And you know, Mildly. Go get Darren Waller or Hawkinson. Yeah. Like get pay, pay enough to get him. So let's, let's, put, uh, let's put the numbers out there. TJ Hawkinson is worth, on a $100 fab budget, is worth what to you? Is he worth? He's not worth a kittle at no. this point. Well, because it's hard for me to spend a kittle on anybody. That's not a kittle. Like a no, a Nick Chubb situation where a, a beast running back all of a sudden is clearly the number one guy. I I uh, applaud your 20. efforts. Would you spend twenty? Yes, I would spend. Uh, I would. I'd be between twenty five and you, thirty. Jason's holding up a thirty sign. Uh, he would spend thirty fab. I would spend fifteen fab on Hawkinson. That's as high as I go. Okay. Darren, yeah, are you Darren, Hawkinson over Waller? I am not. I am Waller over Hawkinson. Okay. I would spend 16 on Darren Waller. Oh, oh so my. So that's how much more. I, that's how much higher I am. I get it. I get why. Um, but uh, Jason said 20 for Darren Waller. Where I am on Hawkinson and Waller, Hawkinson has a a higher ceiling to me. He'll score more, but bigger he plays. Is, he is going to have far more variance, I believe, moving forward. And if you want the security that, like Darren Waller is going to have five receptions a week, Just he will what, also score. Look, look what happened to Jared Cook last year. That's who Darren Waller is going to be. That's why I'm more on the Waller side for okay. sure. I want stability at that position. And I, as look, I was, I think, the only one even mentioning Hawkinson towards the draft season, saying he's going to be on the field 100 percent of the time, top 10 pick. Something's going to happen. Even then, it's still your rookie season, and he played a Cardinal secondary, and you don't want to distort all the results based on playing the Cardinal secondary because I wish that all of my tight ends could do that every week. So uh, with your love for Michael Gallup, 
Are the tight ends still your top two ads of the week? I would say for most teams, the answer is yes. If okay. you're really hurting at wide receiver, no. And that's where the subjectivity comes with all those waiver decisions and why we're bringing these names up and you got to make that decision. But for most teams, if you're not a Travis Kelsey, Zach Ertz, George Kittle, who, by the way, two touchdowns called back, would have won yeah. my matchup against Sam Elliott. Um, but if you don't own those three guys, why not take a shot on an upside tight end? Uh, I want to bring, before we get into quarterback streamers, real quick, are you comfortable dropping blank? I'm going to give you names, okay? Dante Pettis. Yes. Uh, I, yeah, for one of these waiver guys, I would. Yeah, you better. Uh, Marquise Goodwin? Yes. Yeah. Geronimo Allison? No. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. I won't drop Geronimo or Marquez. I won't drop Marquez. That was not the question. Yeah. Well, he was going to be the next name. Well, ask it, Andy. Marquez valdez Scantling? No. No. Yeah, I'll drop Allison. A, a, a zero for zero on zero targets. Um, I understand your your reasoning for hanging on, seeing one more week. Dante Moncrief? Uh, no. Yes. Okay. Uh, Corey Davis? Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a yes on Moncrief. Cut him. Corey Davis, you cut him. Yes. Anthony would, Miller, you I have. I would never have had him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can't cut what you don't have. Anthony Miller. Cut. Yeah. I like Anthony Miller, but you got to move on yep. in week one. You got to go find somebody else. Running backs, uh, Drake or Balazs, the Miami running backs, would you cut them both? No. No. I wouldn't either. Daryl Henderson. No. Yeah. I would cut him. I cannot imagine you keeping him on your bench. How do you do that? Unless you are, if you are the girly owner, it's fine. But let's say, Mike, you, you said no. You have Daryl Henderson. Mark, Malcolm Brown's on the waiver wire. What are you doing? Mm, probably just staying where I was. What? That is shocking. Why? That may be the most shocking it's, thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Why would you life. not rather have Malcolm Brown? One than, snap for Daryl Henderson? I just I want to see what happens in week two. Okay. Peyton Barber. Yeah, you can cut him. Damian Harris. You can cut him. Yep. And then the goose, that is Kyle Rudolph. Yes, I will okay. cut him. All right. Full stream ahead. All right. It's it's a hard business picking quarterback streamers heading into week two because a lot of you drafted quarterbacks that you're probably playing in week two. And uh, then again, there are some of you with Jameis Winston jettisoning him into outer space. Some of you, I think, will be in leagues where my streamer of the week will hit the waiver wire tomorrow. And that is Big Ben. Big Ben will be dropped by a lot of teams tomorrow. They will be pivoting to some of the flashier options on your waiver wire. I wanted to look this up. Uh, first of all, I mean, he's got a good matchup. But Big Ben at home against Seattle, I like it. Last year, I wanted to look and see the consistency charts that we provide, you know, the Join the Foot supporters and that are part of the Ultimate Draft Kit. He finished outside the top 12 only five times last year. In the weeks following those finishes, here were where he went. These were his bounce back games. He finished the week number one, five, five, ten, and four. So coming home, a Seahawks secondary that took a beating from John Ross and Andy Dalton, which is honestly no secondary has been able to claim that in the history of the game. Um, I think it's a bounce back game for Big Ben in week two. And I would be more confident for the Juju, Connor, Moncrief, right. Washington, big play opportunities. Even Vance McDonald should be better for them in week two. I'll jump in here. It's Josh Allen for me. He gets to take on the New York Giants, who were just absolutely torched by Dak Prescott. Josh Allen is not the quarterback, at least throwing the ball that Dak Prescott is. But Allen, you you watched it unfold on Sunday. The guy played very up and down, played very poorly for most of the game, had multiple turnovers. Still doesn't matter because he runs so much. He he scores rushing touchdowns, and then he showed that he can connect with guys like John Brown when he needs to. So I think Josh Allen is. Can I ask you an early start sit question, Mike? Sure. Asking for a friend. Okay. Uh, of course. Josh Allen, who's your you know yeah. stream of the week, thirty two percent owned. I like it. Versus Kyler Murray against Baltimore. Josh Allen. Okay. Mm. Yes. All right. All right. Jason. So uh, the name I want to throw out there first, because I refuse to believe the nonsensical ownership percentages out there, is Dak Prescott. He is a must pick up, must start. 
uh, going forward, and he's available in every single league that I personally play in. But let's can just I, can I ask you a Dak question? By all means, because I think this is what a lot of people are going to face. They see Dak's big numbers. He's sitting out on the waiver wire in one of our leagues. Do you drop Baker Mayfield for Dak Prescott? Ooh, um, I would be willing to do that. I I think that I'm Man. fine. Are you willing to pivot that quick? That's I, that's intense. Because that because otherwise you're on a situation where you're going to have to roster two or three quarterbacks, right? If you two. don't, a lot of the times if you don't drop the big name, you are going to have to roster multiple. Yeah, but I mean, we we went through the would you drop Dante Pettis, Geronimo Allison, Dante Moncrief. Uh, there's I feel like there's enough players to drop where you can hold two quarterbacks right now. So I don't think you have to drop Baker, but. What Assuming, if you had like Kyler and Lamar Jackson? Would you drop Kyler Murray for for Dak Prescott? I would drop. I would. I probably oh. wouldn't do that. That's where uh, this is the yeah. pickle I'm in with Dak Prescott. Man, I that, think I would rather have Dak. I want whoever's the better play this week because they're all good options for the season. Okay, as Dak. Um, okay. but let's say Dak is not available in most leagues. Fine. I think that a good option is Derek Carr. Yeah, who actually looked great. We just brought up the secret garden. First game ever comes out and looks great against Kansas City secondary. Because of Kansas City's offense, there's going to be a lot of throwing needed from Derek oh, Carr. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's so great. I think Derek Carr is going to be just fine against Kansas City. The, the amazing thing is the two players that had the most insane stat lines from a completion percentage perspective was Gardner Minshew, Minshew and Derek Carr last night. And now Carr's going to the, the, the same secondary. So I like the Kansas City pickup we have defensive streamers for you defense versus offense presented by head and shoulders and walmart all right we finally get to do it the quarterback streaming the defensive streaming two of the very uh volatile pivot positions for a lot of teams positions that you didn't spend high draft capital on this is where the nimble owner has like a, a amassed a bounty of running backs and wide receivers, but then has to make the right decisions at quarterback and defense. So uh, what is your favorite defensive special team streamer for week number two? Jason's. Thank you. <laughs> you like Carolina <laughs> yes. against Tampa on Thursday night. I will hop in here then. Yeah, Carolina is – they've got a great defensive line. They're They're, they're good. They were playing the Rams week one, though, so no one wanted to play the Panthers, which Ex justifiably so. I would not want to play my defense against the Rams either. Exactly. But now you get famous Jameis Winston coming in who loves one thing more than anything else, throwing the ball to the other team. So you want to talk offense versus defense. Jameis is going to give points to Carolina. This is Carolina's home opener. I am all about, uh, I'm all about Carolina this week. There was part of me, I don't know why, maybe it's just the contrarian nature of being on the show with you, Jason. There was part of me that wanted to like tell you that I think Tampa's going to have a much better week too, and then like I remember Jameis Winston. <laughs> the thing is is that th that's not mutually exclusive. No, because he could Tampa, give up points and st score points, and yes, it's good for your defense. Because yes. sacks and turnovers are, that's what you want. are what s score points for defenses. You're going to sack Jameis. You're going to get interceptions from Jameis. So yeah, I mean, even if Tampa those are his two power ups, that that's his best <laughs> trait. Also, this you is, flip oh. the card over. There's two power ups. Also, this is not their home opener, right? The the Rams were in Carolina. That oh, is correct. Self, yeah, it was self correction. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah. Um, I'm gonna go with the Titans defense. I was so impressed with it. I I really believed in it heading into the season. What they did on that uh, on that defensive line, which look, they're only eight percent owned, and they face the Indianapolis Colts this week. They 100% owned the Browns this past week. Yes. And I loved everything I saw. I think you've got turnover opportunities. You still have Jacoby Brissett, you know, figuring things out. And Brissett didn't throw for a lot of yardage in that game, that comeback against the Chargers. There wasn't a lot of yardage there. So I don't think you have a lot of risk of Jacoby Brissett. But you got upside with the Titans repeating what they're doing, and they're at home. So I like the Titans a lot. And I like I like both of those more than the one I'm going to throw out, and they're also far more available in leagues. However, Buffalo, the Bills, they are a great defense, and they will be taking on, much like Josh Allen, who is their quarterback, they will be playing Eli Manning and the New York Giants. I am willing to play almost any defense 
against the Giants, regardless of Saquon Barkley and his 100 plus yards from scrimmage, because Eli's going to get he's going to get hit, and he will have, he will be able to turn the ball over as well. And, and on top of that, like I already said, though, Buffalo is a great defense, so that's both things are matching up here for me. Yeah, I don't I don't mind that at all. Head and shoulders, offense for your hair, defense for a flake free scalp. Check it out at walmart.com or at your local Walmart. That was our defense versus offense, defensive streamers segment. As we close out today's show, uh, I want to thank Pristine Auction, our studio sponsor. Uh, I see Brooks put in here yesterday. Brooks browses like whatever like was sold yesterday at Pristine Auction. Cortland Sutton signed football $47.91. I just had somebody tweet me a picture of about 600 mini helmets on their wall that they bought nice. through Pristine Auction. All autographed, uh, all authentic sports memorabilia. PristineAuction.com. Use the registration code BALLER. So, uh, Jason, I hope that you continue this recovery that you're on. I'm, I hate to break it to you. You're not there yet. I I agree. I'm going to go You'll to my get coffin there, now. But I appreciate the effort today. But also, fellas, the multiverse is overflowing with ultrasonic energy. The goal of biofeedback is to plant the seeds of interconnectedness rather than material. Was that the Lizard King? <laughs> yeah. It's so, so insightful, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> what a way hey, to close the show. Go crush the waivers. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.